In today's video, I'm going to show you how to tie your own finger sling and how to make sure that it is tied at the correct length. So this is something that's pretty simple and straightforward, uh, but if you don't have your finger sling set the correct length, your bow is going to either jump too far or not far enough out of your hand, and ultimately it can just kind of lead to a bit of an uncomfortable or an awkward feeling after the bow jumps out of your hand. So in today's video, I am going to show you how to properly size your finger sling for you and tie one yourself out of an old shoestring. You're watching the Jake Kaminsky YouTube channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery. I'm working to make this channel a great resource to all types of archery, from form to tuning, uh, strength training, mental work, you name it. Uh, I'm working on producing content to help make you a better archer and basically just eliminate the growing pains that I had when I was coming up in the sport. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation or disinformation out there, so uh, this is a great resource for you to tap into. Uh, so if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the notification bell. That way you're notified when I do upload new videos, which is fairly often these days. Uh, I'm making lots of videos and tons of content, and you don't want to miss out on what I've got coming out. Okay, so this is a very simple, easy thing. Um, many of the top level archers use a basically just a shoestring as their finger sling. They don't buy the ones that have, you know, that are out of paracord and stuff like that. Uh, because those ones in general are too short. Um, in general, top level recurve shooters use finger slings, not wrist slings. Like I said, in general, it's not everyone. But basically, this is just a shoestring that I had laying around. Um, there are many different kinds. I prefer the type that are just like this. That basically, as you can see, I'll do a close up for you, but essentially what this is, is it's not quite a flat piece and it's not a round piece. It's got a little bit of cushion. Uh, there is no stretch to them. And uh, basically this is the optimal type that you should use. <clears throat> if you use the ones that are flat or the round ones that are smaller or hard like a paracord, uh, it's actually fairly uncomfortable on your fingers. And if you shoot a lot of arrows like I did when I lived at the Olympic Training Center, you know, sometimes 400 plus arrows a day, and you know a six eight pound bow tugging on your fingers several hundred times a day uh, can basically be pretty you know painful so you got to have some comfortable ones so this is a comfortable one plus this style will not loosen on you all the time so you won't have to sit there and constantly adjust it so this is the best type of uh, shoelace for you um, basically you can grab them out of some old pairs of shoes or whatever i've done it um, I've had them break on me in tournaments and just taken my shoelace out of my shoe and then uh, retied it uh, with my shoelace. So you can do it with that. Um, this is a really long set, so you really don't need um, a whole lot because, you know, you could tie it in the middle like this and then have these long dangly things to deal with. I mean, maybe it looks cool, but uh, definitely not really useful. Um, it does kind of give you a tell for the wind, so you could use that as an advantage, but I can tell you you're going to cause a whole lot more problems when you have these long tails sticking out. Uh, namely, they like to get hooked on things like your uh, clicker or your arrow rest or something like that, and it will absolutely bend uh, your stuff out of the way as you're walking by. It hangs up on your sight pin. You bend your sight pin. I've seen it happen a lot. So what I always like to do, number one, first and foremost, especially if you have a long shoelace like this, is cut it right in two. So I just grab the ends and then I find the middle and I cut right through it. And now I can make two uh, finger slings. So now that you have two pieces, I put the one piece behind me. Um, you could take a lighter and burnish the end and make it you know, somewhat melty so that way it doesn't fray. Uh, certain shoelaces need that to be done so they don't just disappear into nothing. Uh, but just for this video, I'm not going to bother with that. Basically, what you want to do with a lighter is you want to light it. You don't want to get it on fire, but you want to see the ends melt until they all stick together. And then you can stick it against the lighter uh, to kind of coagulate it and stick it. So that way they don't fray and open up on you. Now, there's two types of knots you can do. You could do a uh, square knot, um, which, you know, it's uh, got to be really accurate with where you're tying it. Because a square knot, um, you're basically, you know, it's going to lock in place pretty heavily. But if you just do a single simple overhand knot with both ends together, just a regular granny overhand knot like this, uh, you take the two ends and you know you just loop them over themselves and tie it together. Um, now don't pull it tight the first time. 
So it's just a basic knot like this. And then what you do with this loop is you take your two fingers and you do, it's kind of like cat's cradle. You know, if I don't know if you did it in elementary school like I used to, but basically um, the front loop, the loop that goes on your index finger, you come up from the bottom. If you come up from the bottom like this and then you loop around like that and you make basically like a little pretzel loop and then, so your fingers are in them still because we came up from the bottom, go down, bring the loops together, slide the loop from your thumb onto your index finger all the way to the base like that. There's our loop on our index finger. And now for the thumb, we come from the top, all right? And I'm gonna show you why. You come from the top, you loop around, you make the loop, slide it onto your thumb. And there is your finger sling, all right? So why do you come up from the bottom on the index and down from the top on the thumb? Well, this way, it's always tightening, right? Now, if I were to do it the opposite way, come down from the top on the index, and then up down from the top on the thumb, in my experience, as I'm shooting like this time and time again, if the loop is not coming from the bottom side and it's coming from the top like this, it will loosen and you'll have to constantly adjust. And as you can see, it's trying to slide off my index finger already. So anyway, it's just a little quick tip is to, when you're doing the loops, you come from, bottom, you come from the bottom on the index finger and then you come from the top on the thumb, all right? And then you gotta pay attention to where this knot is. I like to put it near my index finger. So as you see, when I grab it, I slide it. So instead of the knot being way over here, I push the knot towards my index finger away from me and now the knot is right near my index finger when i tighten this this knot will shrink in size by at least 50 percent and then now you can see the knot is pretty much towards the front of the riser if you were to put it in a different position say too far this way as i go to do the loop for my thumb now the knot is in the loop on my thumb very uncomfortable gets in the way not ideal so those are that's the easiest way to quickly set up the finger sling now we need to take into consideration how long it is. So we can adjust where this knot is and make the loop bigger or smaller. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a bow and uh, I'll show you. This is the, the new Win and Win uh, Radical Pro and the MXT limbs, by the way. If you haven't seen the video on where I'm reviewing it, um, I'll put a link in the description below, plus I'll put a card at the top. Um, I'm playing with it for bare bow, as you can see, that's what it's set up for. And uh, I'm actually, after this video, I'm gonna be doing a uh, shooting of this to you know further my review of it. So keep an eye out for that if uh, you have seen the first video of this. So like, like I said, we got our front loop on our index finger. This is how it always stays. I never take it off of my index finger. I just leave it on all day and this is how it goes. I can still pull arrows, score, uh, score the arrows, do whatever I need to do. But then what I'll do is um, I'll loop again now from the top, make my loop for my thumb and tighten it. And so what you want to do is as the bow jumps out of your hand, you want to have a decent amount of space. Like you should be able to fit your finger in between your bow or your hand in the grip. Um, and actually this one is pretty much the perfect length. All right. So I'm going to say between the throat of the grip and the throat of your thumb and index finger, when the, uh, when the finger sling is in the forward position like this, I'm gonna say there is about an inch and a half gap between the two spots. Um, so in centimeters, that should be about five centimeters, give or take. So basically, that is ideal. If it was too short and the bow just jumped like that, it is essentially like you gripping and holding onto the bow. There's not enough uh, room for the bow to kind of jump and react and do what it wants to do. So if I were to uh, tie the knot slightly shorter on the loop itself, so if I move the knot shorter down, make the loop small, it makes it, well, first difficult to get on because you got a lot less material to work with. So now the placement of the knot is far more important. So it's just enough where I can get it on. See, is it takes me a whole lot longer to get it on. And now when it jumps, like there's still a gap there, but I can't, it just, it feels very awkward and very uncomfortable. And there's actually a lot of tension on it if my hand is in the correct position in the bow on the grip. 
um, I can feel it pulling onto the bow and I don't want to induce torque into the bow unnecessarily. Now if the loop was too long, what will happen is the bow will kind of swing unruly and it'll just kind of get out of control and you won't be able to manage it. Um, it'll fall and potentially bump into other people on the line and uh, ultimately it'll just cause you some issues. So I really would make sure that you don't have it too big. Now this is definitely too big. I don't have enough material here to show you like an extreme end of the spectrum, how much uh, like way too big is. But basically what will happen <clears throat> when it is too big is the bow is gonna jump so far out of your hand and it's just gonna kind of be unruly and you won't be able to manage it as it's jumping out of your hand and swinging. Because this bow is set up for bear bow, it's not gonna swing for me, I don't have a long rod on it. But essentially what too long is, is if you were to take it, have it jump out away from your hands and if you can touch these like this behind the grip and have the loop on this section of your, your grip itself, that's too big. So you, won't, you shouldn't be able to touch these two together. So it should be just enough jump, just enough gap, not too tight where it's holding tension. But as you can see, this one is so loose, there's a lot of excess. The excess is okay, but it's when it jumps is when there's a problem. It's just gonna swing unruly, hit your, uh, you know, the people next to you, and could be a little painful as well, plug, pulling and tugging on your finger with that much weight as it's jumping out and falling. So I would just avoid that, um, find that happy medium, on where the knot position should be. And again, I would absolutely not use a stretchy material um, because it will kind of just, again, you don't have a consistent setting on how long it is. So it just becomes a little bit annoying. So once you get your knot set in the right place um, and it's potentially just a little too short, what you do is you take the loop and you pull it and then it's gonna tighten the knot on the inside and so the knot is slid down and uh, it's tight and it may be a little bit big now because I really tightened the knot. But as you can see, the knot is maybe a third or a quarter of the size of what it used to be. Actually, it's going to be pretty close. Yeah, it's still a little too loose. So you just got to play with the optimal position of where that knot is and you'll find out the best spot for it for you. Uh, but again, this is basically free if you have an old pair of shoes. It's a nice, easy, quick tip, and uh, hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter or check out books, apparel, and some seminar info, head to jkaminski.com, and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you again.